Hello friends! Today I'm going to be sharing with you all of the books, movies, and TV shows that make me feel all the festive winter holiday vibes. As we're transitioning from autumn to winter, I thought it was the perfect time to share all of these recommendations with you guys. These aren't all going to be like Christmas themed, but more winter themed. So I think let's start with the books. So the first book is one that I am currently reading and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Now, the reason that I recommend this one is because of the winter atmosphere. I can't think of a better time to read Wuthering Heights than during like a cold winter evening set by the fire drinking some tea. I know not everyone loves this novel. I feel like you either love it or you hate it. I think if you go into it expecting it to be some epic love story like a Jane Austen novel, then you would not like it and you would feel pretty let down. It's mostly a story of revenge because one of our main characters um, his soulmate falls in love and marries someone else. But the way Emily writes about the snow and the cold and the mist and like just it like chills me to the bones but in a good way it makes me feel like winter when I am reading it. But along with this one I also want to recommend The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Essentially it tells the story of a woman who violates social conventions, braves the world, and faces adversity all on her own. It's hailed as one of the first feminist novels and it is absolutely amazing. The reason that I recommend it for winter is because this is my ideal cozy book. If you want to cozy up next to a fire and to drink some tea or watch the snow as it's falling on a crisp winter morning, this would be like my go-to book. While it does deal with some heavy topics of her basically leaving her awful husband and being like, screw you, I'm, I'm not putting up with you anymore and going out and you know facing some hardships, it also gives you so many warm and cozy vibes. It has such a happy ending full of romance and good vibes and it's just I think it's a very underrated Bronte book and I just highly recommend it. Now this next one is perfect if you want to read about snow and Alaska the 1920s and it kind of gives me Anne of Green Gables vibes just in the sense that it's set on a farm. It has to do with harvest and some hard times that come along with that, but also amazing family relationships. And that is The Snow Child by Ebony Ivy. This is such a beautifully written novel that is inspired by a Russian folktale about an elderly couple who makes like a snow child and it actually comes to life. Our main characters are named Jack and Mabel. They're like in their 50s and they've never had a child and they've always wished that they could though. One evening they decide to be like little children. I think Jack is the one that initiates it. They run outside and they make this snow child and then in the morning the snow child is gone and there's an actual child that they see running around in the woods. They kind of just take this child in and adopt this child and it's such a heartwarming story with the backdrop of Alaska and the snow in the 20s. It's so, it's just like one of the perfect winter books. Just don't go in expecting it to be extremely happy. It's kind of like The Odd Life of Timothy Green if you've seen that movie. You kind of know how it ends. The kind of the same with this book. It might not have like the traditional happy ending, but I still loved it. I cried a little bit, but it's, it's very good and very atmospheric and just perfect for winter. Up next, we have one of my favorite books that I read this year. It is set during winter. There's lots of snow involved and it is Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Marillier. Now, don't be deceived by the cover. It kind of looks like it's set during spring and summer but it's not. It is very much winter and it is very, very cold in this novel. And this is actually a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling. It is set high in the Transylvania woods at Castle Pisco Draculi. I if I remember right, I probably butchered that. And in the castle lives five daughters and their father. Their father ends up having to leave for an extended period of time and the daughters are pretty much on their own. They love to go exploring in this mysterious forest nearby and every night on full moon, they are able to cross over into this enchanted land of fairies. But then one day while their father is gone, he thinks that they might be needing some help. So he sends in, I think it's like their cousin. Um, I don't remember if it's their cousin, but it's 
another man. There's tension between him kind of discovering that they're going out to this enchanted forest and he wants to possibly destroy this forest because he thinks there are tales of this forest that had like killed people that were close to him. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to spoil anything. So if you like fairy tales, but you also like winter atmosphere and castles and Transylvania, I know Transylvania usually makes us think of like Dracula and a fall time, but the vibes in this are so immaculate for winter. I had to include it on this list. And then next we've got one of my all time favorite nonfiction books and that is Cozy, The British Art of Comfort by Laura Weir. Wire, Weir. This book is just full of ideas of how to be cozy. It also goes through like, what does it even mean to be cozy? Well, cozy is the thing you do when no one is watching. In the British Isles, being cold gives us permission to be lazy. There's nothing better than that. Stopping still and cozying up has become the greatest luxury of our time. It also has really cute artwork to mark each chapter. So this is the tea chapter and it has a really cute little teacup. There is a section about how to make the perfect cup of tea, cozy clothing, and just lots of really pretty illustrations, cozy crafting. Let's be honest, out of all the seasons where we wanna feel cozy, winter is 100% cozy season. And then the last book that I wanna talk about is called Sleigh Rides and Silver Bells at the Christmas Fair by Heidi Swain. I don't have a physical copy because I actually listened to this one on audio. If you want a book that is a Hallmark movie, essentially, um, this is the book. Look no further than this one. In my opinion, this is actually better than a Hallmark movie. It's not quite as cheesy, not quite as predictable, but it has all the vibes of a Hallmark movie. We've got small town, our main character is kind of struggling with some stuff in her past, a massive estate that is full of the quirkiest and sweetest, most lovely characters. It has sleigh rides, Christmas shopping, present wrapping, hot chocolate, warm fires, some romance. It features our two main characters and one of them is this girl. I don't remember her name, so we're just gonna say our two main characters. She gets hired at this estate to kind of help out with Christmas and help um, the lady who lives at the estate, her and her husband, but she's essentially like her lady's assistant. And she really hates Christmas because of some things that have happened in her past that have kind of traumatized her. She just, she tries to escape from Christmas, but at this estate, they're doing like a very slow, chill Christmas, so she thought it would be okay. And while she's there, one of these sons comes home and he is meant to take over this massive estate and he does not want to do that. So they become friends and they decide that they're going to help each other with the things that they're struggling with. So he is going to help her fall back in love with Christmas and she is going to help him fall back in love with the estate and work there with his family. It has all the cozy vibes. One of my favorite books of the year and I already want to reread it. So if you are looking for a book that feels like a Hallmark movie but better, look no further than Sleigh Rides and Silver Bells at the Christmas Fair. Okay, I think those are all the books. So let's move on to TV shows. These are the ones that I rewatch every winter and that just make me feel very nostalgic and happy and festive. And the first one is just very nostalgic, so I'll just jump right in. It's Little House on the Prairie. I grew up watching this one, the episode where they're snowed in, and I forget his name, you guys, Tell me in the comments his name because I can't remember. But he's their friend and he walks through the snowy, icy river and brings them sweet potatoes for Christmas dinner and it's like the best gift they could have received. That episode gets me every time and puts me in the perfect mood for Christmas. It's a reminder of simplistic living and how you don't need all the frills and all of the presents, all the Black Friday shopping and everything to feel what Christmas is all about. It's about being together with the ones that you love and sharing that happiness together. If you really need something to make you feel better, calm anxiety, make your worries slip away, watch Little House on the Prairie. Now going kind of hand in hand with that, I need to recommend Anne with an E. You can watch this one on Netflix and it's a TV show based on the book series Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. There are a lot of episodes set during winter and it's just very heartwarming. You see her go to school and the way that she loves to go outside and play in the snow and just like live her best life. She is a ball full of joy and happiness and it's impossible to watch the show and not 
feel that radiate off of her and it's contagious. It makes you feel the way she does. Also, the scenery is just stunning. There are so many scenes of them riding through the snow, playing in the snow, having snowball fights, fires, you know, cabins and the barn. And everything is so wintry and beautiful and magical. It's definitely one of my go-tos. So the next TV show is one that I haven't even, okay, I've watched like 10 minutes of, but I needed to include it because it just recently came out and I do plan on watching it this winter. And it is on Netflix, it's called Lily and Dash. I know it's based on a book series called Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. It's about these two teenagers, I think they're in high school, and this kind of whirlwind Christmas romance that blossoms between the two characters as Dash and Lily trade dares and dreams and desires in this notebook that they pass back and forth at different locations in New York City. And it's also kind of one of those like opposites attract. They're very different from each other. And I find that really fun to watch. From the few minutes that I've watched of the first episode, it is very visually stunning. You've got all of the Christmas vibes in New York. You've got all the colors of reds and whites and greens and lights and all of the beautiful locations that you typically see at Christmas films set in New York City. Their chemistry is really sweet and it's just such a fun, sweet story. Story. And it does have 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. If you do go based off of Rotten Tomatoes scores, it's, it's working pretty high over there. So if you want something like really sweet and kind of fun and lighthearted that's set in New York and has all of the New York Christmas vibes, then this would definitely be the one for you. Yeah, highly recommend. Okay, those are all of the TV shows. So let's move on to films. I have so many that I love to watch during winter, but I've narrowed it down to some of my favorites. There are some festive and holiday-ish ones, but then also ones that are purely focused just on winter, snow, cozy vibes. So I know if I don't include this on the list, you guys are gonna come at me in the comments and be like, this one, you, how could you not mention it? So I'm just gonna mention it because it is one of my favorites. And that is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I can't think of a more perfect movie to watch during winter. The aesthetic of this film is impeccable, immaculate, absolute perfection. With the snow and Mr. Tumnus and the castle, the lamppost, the Turkish delight, the outfits, the trees covered in snow. It's just perfect. If you don't know the story, it's about these kids who basically open a wardrobe, go inside and get transported into this very magical, beautiful, but also kind of scary world. It always feels like a warm hug after I finish watching The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is why I had to include it and recommend it to you guys. Winter's not all bad. There's ice skating and, and snowball fights. <laughs> oh, and Christmas. Oh, next is one of my favorites, and that is Winter's Tale. This movie is aesthetic goals. So basically, one night in the early 20th century in New York, this thief named Peter Lake, who is played by Colin Farrell, breaks into this Central Park mansion. And then he quickly has his heart stolen by the occupant, this woman named Beverly Penn. She kind of falls for him as well. It's like this moment where they just look at each other and they kind of just know there's something really special between them. Squeaks. You have a gun. Just robbing the place, you know? Is that still your intention? No, it isn't. Well then, I suppose the polite thing to do would be to offer you a cup of tea. <laughs> Best thing you've ever stolen. I'm beginning to think I haven't stolen it yet. But unfortunately, their love is kind of doomed because she is dying of consumption. And he is marked for death by his demonic former mentor, this man named Pearlie. And he is played by Russell Crowe. So Peter battles the forces of time and darkness to save Beverly, even as Pearlie does everything in his power to defeat Peter. There are some scenes set at this like mansion, castle type place by this lake. It is absolutely beautiful. It looks like something you'd see on a postcard sent from Christmas in New York in the 20th century. And as some of the lines that Peter delivers are like pure poetry. Can you hear your heart? Stop it. Or melt all the snow I'm standing on. Give me a chance and you'll melt all the snow in the world. So if you like classic novels, like dark academia, but like winter and like 20th century New York winter vibes that also has a touch of magical realism in there as well, then you've got to watch this film. Next is one of my new favorites that I only watched a couple weeks ago and it's called All That Heaven Allows. It takes place, I think it starts in September or November in the 1950s and I think it's upstate New York. We meet our main character, Carrie, who is a very attractive widow and she has 
this very handsome gardener that kind of attends to her front lawn and trees and flowers and he is considerably younger than her and this romance starts to spark between them and at that time age gaps especially if the woman was older than the man was very frowned upon but they decide to throw convention to the wind and just go with it and it's such a beautiful love story not only that it's set during the transition from autumn to winter so I know now a lot of where you guys live, it's not quite snowing yet. It is for me, but I know for a lot of you, it's not. So this is the perfect to kind of get the end of fall, but also the beginning of winter in there. And so since Ron is a landscaper, he very much loves simplistic living. He kind of lives a bit rurally outside of town and he wants to be like a tree farmer. So he has all of these trees. He has this barn that he lives in. And there are these scenes taken from above of where he lives. It's so picturesque and I really love Love the themes of not letting other people control your life doing what's best for you because in the movie Carrie's children don't approve of her being with a younger man they are actually quite ridiculously complainy about it but she doesn't end up listening to them and I love that at a time when it was not really accepted that she just went for it and did what she wanted to do I was rooting for her the whole time so I would recommend this to you if you like vintage films especially 1950s and you can actually find the whole film on YouTube which is where I watched it because the original version wasn't black and white but I found on YouTube there's the new colorized version and it's absolutely stunning the colors are perfect so I will leave that in the description box you can just click it and go watch the whole movie now for free I highly recommend it and next is Little Women the 2019 version I know there are debates all about which version is better but the 2019 is personally my favorite so that's the one that I'm going to talk about it was directed by Greta Gerwig who did such an amazing job it's perfect for this time of year because it just completely and capsules the feeling of winter and Christmas. There are some scenes where they have this massive Christmas dinner, but they get word of this family who is basically living in poverty and really struggling. And they end up giving up their entire Christmas dinner, bringing it all over to this family and giving it to them. And then there are other scenes where they're just dancing and playing and performing their plays for their friends and family. All of the colors and the aesthetic of it is very much like a kind of vintagey Christmas vibe. The costumes are so beautiful. To me, a movie is everything. It's the aesthetic, it's the vibe, it's the costumes, it's the color grading, it's the locations, it's the buildings. All of that is what makes a really good film for me, especially if we're talking about like a seasonal film, like a fall film or a winter film. It has to have all of those things together that encompass what winter is and Little Woman does it really well. Plus, it's such a feel-good film, you, you can't watch it and walk away feeling upset or stressed in my opinion. Now, the next film is one for you mystery lovers, and that is Murder on the Orient Express. I have a thing for trains and books or movies or TV shows that are set on trains. This film is completely set on a train. So all these people are traveling and it's snowing outside. It is very cold. They all have like their fur coats and their gloves and hats. And my favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, which I can never say his name properly. I will someday, I promise. He gets set to work to figure out who the murderer is. And of course, it's based on Agatha Christie's novel, Murder on the Orient Express, which I have read, but I actually prefer the film. You cannot beat Agatha Christie when it comes to mystery. She is the queen, and for good reason. And this film it has a very star-studded cast. We've got so many famous actors, Johnny Depp being one of them. I will say the end of this one was very unexpected. I didn't see it coming. It was kind of different from Agatha Christie's usual style. So if you like mysteries and you like the setting of a train and a very much like whodunit story, then this one is perfect for you. And finally, I can't not talk about the Samantha movie. So do you guys know, you guys know like American Girl dolls, right? Um, I had one as a kid, I had Molly. I would love to know which one you guys had, if you guys had American Girl dolls. Anyway, so there are movies based on the American Girl dolls and their stories, and the Samantha movie is my favorite, and it is set, I think it's in upstate New York. The beginning of the movie is set during summer, but it kind of works its way up to Christmas. So during the summer, Samantha makes friends with these little girls who kind of live next door. As the story progresses, we see that their father, because he's already a single father, 
he dies and they are all on their own. They get sent to this orphanage in New York City and Samantha is heartbroken because they had become her best friends. Now, Samantha lives in upstate New York, but her aunt is sending her to New York City to stay with, I think it's her uncle. And while she is there in the city, she discovers this orphanage and that's where her friends are staying. She sees the conditions that they're living in and is appalled by it. She kind of makes a plan of how to help them escape. The movie ends with Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Some very amazing things happen and it's so beautiful. So if you like movies like Miracle on 34th Street that kind of involve children, magic, snow, and all of the heartwarming vibes, then you definitely gotta watch this movie. Also, I love the time period and the outfits and the carriages, the way that they decorate the living room. It's so beautiful and this is definitely more of a Christmassy one. So if you are in the mood for a Christmas film, not just a winter film, then this one would definitely be a great one to choose as well. I will put the links of where to watch it in the description box. I think the full thing is on YouTube, but I think it's also on Disney Plus. So I think those are all of my recommendations for now. I will actually be leaving a list in the description box of more movies, more TV shows, and more books that will give you winter and holiday festive vibes because I couldn't include them all in the video. So definitely go check out the list for more recommendations. And I would love to hear your favorite festive holiday book or a movie or a TV show. So please comment it down below because I need more to watch and read. So I would really appreciate it if you could share yours with me. I hope you are having a very festive, but yet safe season so far. I have a lot more winter content planned. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye friends.